Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. I just got done watching Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. It is limitedly released right now in theaters, even though in one week you will be able to catch this movie on Netflix. So I'm going to tell you if it was a wise decision to pay for a ticket that is also the same price as my monthly Netflix subscription when I would have gotten this movie for free. This is spoiler free, so I'm not going to be giving away anything involved with the movie, but I am curious to see how many of you guys are willing to go to the theater this weekend to watch the movie, as opposed to, I'm just going to wait a week for it. But with Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, it takes place in a world where the zombie apocalypse has happened, but it's been quarantined to the area of Las Vegas. A group of soldiers are then put together, led by Dave Bautista, where they must go into Vegas to get a large sum of money before the US government bombs the place entirely. I was really looking forward to this from the trailer, but I was hesitant at the same time because this is a zombie movie. And even though I grew up really liking zombie films like Dawn of the Dead, both versions, even one done by Zack Snyder himself, director of this movie. After seeing a thousand more after that and multiple seasons of The Walking Dead, some good, some really bad, I was really burnt on the zombie genre. And I thought there really isn't anything new you can do. Same with the shark genre where there's just millions of those movies. But darn it, if the trailer did not make the movie seem like it was going to be fresh, original, some unique changes and for the most part Zack Snyder freaking delivers man I'm actually very happy I spent the money to go see this movie in theaters because I think that is the place it needs to be seen with the action the epicness that only Zack Snyder can do because that's something I think Zack Snyder does really well is visuals and capturing that on screen is Zack Snyder's strong suit even from the opening of this movie and the world building they do to already get you enticed and kind of curious to like okay how did this apocalypse start and you're like oh Oh, I like that little planting seed right there. Leading to an epic montage, almost something similar to the way Zombieland opened, where it's just showing you the progress of this apocalypse over several weeks or months, and you're like, oh man, that is epic. He really does craft a great world in here that is unique and different from other zombie movies. Getting onto the team members involved with this movie, because it is filled with a large group of soldiers that are going into this Las Vegas area, these guys aren't really one dimensional or one note a lot of the characters in here have their own shining moments are really badass and when they're fighting these zombies you are cheering clapping because it's pretty fun to see some of these characters get out of those sticky situations stand out of course Dave Batista as the leader of the team but aside from that there were other characters in here I really like like the person in charge of cracking the safe or the guy who actually was a youtuber and built a YouTube channel of killing zombies attached to this team might sound ridiculous but he was one one of the funnest ones to watch on screen and I also just want to quickly mention the integration of the comedian Tig in this movie for those of you who don't know Tig actually is replacing Chris D'Elia in this movie which is a comedian who was cast in this film and then later was accused of some stuff that not so great was cancelled and then they brought in Tig to replace him in all his scenes I was really afraid it was gonna stand out be a bother but man you cannot tell the difference at all and you really believe this character was always meant to be in the movie since day one the other thing I I definitely wanted to touch upon it since this is a Zack Snyder movie and he's moved to Netflix he's been given free reign to do whatever he wants and that means two and a half hour long movie y'all another thing I was scared about when going into this film because I'm like hey it's a zombie movie w w what much can you do with this zombie film but he manages to pack in a lot and even throws in some unique angles with some commentary on our daily lives on if this apocalypse was real and everybody was on edge of like are you infected are you infected and who the people of power would be targeting saying these are the most likely to be infected we got to put them away or even when it comes to zombies themselves the different levels of intelligent zombies fast zombies strong zombies I like the lore behind that. I was really intrigued and even wanted to know more, but the movie kind of keeps you guessing on that. You can obviously tell I had a really good time with this movie. I enjoyed so much of it. And I think this is a perfect example why Zack Snyder kind of belongs with a streaming service like Netflix, because I bet you if he made this movie for, I don't know, Warner Brothers or some other studio, they would have seen those two and a half hours he made and was like, yeah, this is a zombie movie, Zach. You got to cut a whole 40 hour out of this film and it would have felt so sloppy, choppy and people would have probably hated it to where now you have the full thing, the character development, the introduction, the time to flesh these guys out along with the lore involved with these zombies. It makes for a damn pretty fun time, but I do have some issues with this film. Now, before I go into them, I want to say, yeah, Zack Snyder's a great man. I think he's a cool dude and I like his filmmaking just because I say negative things about this film. Don't come attacking me. Some of y'all Snyder followers be scaring me and keeping me up at night. So now with that disclaimer said, 
I think the thing that was dragging this movie from going to really good to like great and maybe one of Zack's best of all time is that he chose to take the route of I'm gonna make this a franchise instead of I'm just gonna create a one good straight solo movie. And what I mean by that is there's a turn that happens in the final act of this movie. The last one third of it where everything is just kind of flowing great. You're on the edge of your seat, your suspense, you're hoping these guys make it out and then something changes and I can kind of tell you the exact moment when one character out of nowhere just reveals their love for another character and you're like, okay, nothing in this movie suggested that these two liked each other and now all of a sudden they do? Oh, now I see why they did that. And it just goes from closing this one movie and making it a perfect solo film to, nah, I want this to be a franchise, so here's a setup for a prequel, a sequel, maybe even a TV series, which they do have in the works. But even with that said, I can't complain too much because I am intrigued by the lore and I do want to know more about these zombies and where they could possibly come from because the possibilities with them are endless and there's room for a lot of cool stuff in the future if they decide to. I just also wouldn't have mind if you stuck to telling this one whole story ending it off instead of giving us maybe a cliffhanger so we could answer a whole bunch of other questions in another installment. So for Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, I'm gonna give action four stars here. The action is kind of spread out because they take the time to develop these characters and fill you in onto their backstory and why you should care if they die, which is a good thing. So I'll forgive it because when the action happens, it's bloody, it's gory, and it's great. Comedy in the movie, I'm gonna give it two and a half stars. There are some funny moments here in the film. It's just sprinkled throughout, but it's not too much. Drama in the film, I'm gonna give it three stars and that is saying a lot because like I said this is a zombie movie and they were able to pack in an interesting story with some intriguing lore that I'm curious to see more about if they decide to do it. Heart in the film I'll give two and a half stars to. You won't really be scared because this is an action film with a lot of suspense but when the blood happens Zack Snyder knows how to deliver on that even if some of it is CGI it still is pretty gruesome and awesome to see. And suspense the film I am going to give three and a half stars to because I really did enjoy the suspense in this movie. I was on the edge of my seat especially when it came to a bunch of these characters hopefully making it out casual fans i'm gonna give it an a plus cinephiles i'm gonna give it an a minus and critically i'm going to give it a b minus i'm still back and forth on my final rating because of deciding to make this a franchise instead of at least concluding this one story before you make more so i'm gonna say it's worth watching in theaters <laughs> I was really one step closer to making this a definite own and buy the movie when it's released, but I don't even know how that works with Netflix. If I gained anything from the fact of watching this movie, it's one, that zombie films can still be fun, but two, that Zack Snyder needs to stay with people like Netflix who are going to give him freedom to do what he wants because he creates something that's really fun then instead of climbing on to IPs or superhero movies. So I want to know from you guys, are you going to be checking out Army of the Dead? If you did see it this weekend, go ahead in the comments and let me know what you thought about it and if you thought it was a worthwhile zombie movie. And think of everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.